Hello and welcome to another update on the Spitfire Restoration Series. I'm Anthony Parkinson, Parky, Chief Pilot for Aero Legends, and I'm here at Duxford, the aircraft restoration company, where we're going to have a look at MJ444, our new Spitfire, Aero Legends' new Spitfire, and uh, she's pitched up from the Isle of Wight, so we saw her there getting built, fuselage, wings, tailplane, and uh, she's now at Duxford, so we're going to meet Martin overall and find out where she's at. Good to see you, Mike. Morning, Parky. Welcome to Arco. Yeah, it's good to be here. Hopefully some exciting developments on MJ444. Definitely, yeah. We've done a, been busy in the hangar. Got lots to show you. Fantastic. Yeah. She's uh, beginning to look like a spirit. Certainly is. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait. Yeah, let's go. Well, here we are, Mo. She's, uh, she's really beginning to take shape. Looks fantastic. Yes, she is, yeah, yeah. So we're in the restoration side of the hangars at Arco, yeah. um, which is not open to the public. So um, not many people have seen her yeah. at this stage. Um, but we had, the aeroplane was painted early December yeah. um, and we had the wings on, the undercarriage on just before Christmas. Yeah, definitely taking shape. So waiting for the engine, that should be here in a couple of weeks, I believe. Yeah, engine is due in two weeks. And as soon as that arrives, um, we'll be installing it and starting that systems work. Fantastic. Can we go and have a look at that then? Yep. So, requiring a Merlin? Yes. Yep. Yeah, it's a, a hell of a weight for this engine bearer to hold, isn't it? Incredible yeah. strength it must have. It's impressive to see, especially when we do the the full power runs, how much this structure twists and shakes. Extraordinary power. So this was actually built down at Penn Farm in Kent. Yes, yeah, we and then, made all the fittings and it was assembled down yeah, um, yeah. at Penn Farm. And then uh, 500 series Merlin. Yep. Uh, single stage, so hasn't got the two stage supercharger. So there's more space, no intercooler either. Yeah. So yeah. that makes your job slightly more difficult in terms of all the the uh, the fittings for the engine yeah it's a little different the engine's about seven inches shorter than yeah. the 266 so we've got more room to play with at the back but of course a lot of the pipe work is different to standard yeah um so we'll just engineer and work with that once the engine is in and then the engine will arrive pretty much straight away she'll be fitted but you still need to then fit all the ancillaries generators hydraulic pumps etc but you'll put the engine in first and then get the the uh, cowlings and more of the metal work done as well yeah as soon as the engine's in that allows us to build the cowling rails and frame so it's a it's a bit of a bun fight between the engineers because yeah. the sheet metal guys want to get on i need to get in systems wise yeah. but yeah we'll work together and and that will come on fairly quickly yeah. fantastic i love it when it's exposed like this because you can see the the seven bolts, three and four, that hold the wings on. So you've got the, the uh, we saw these being built at airframe assemblies when she was first a year and a half ago, just taking shape. But the, uh, the top wing spar, the bottom wing spar, bolted to frame five, yep. back of the engine. And really that is the structural heart, the strength of the Spitfire, isn't it? In those, those seven bolts holding the wings yeah. on it. it. It always amazes me that you can get such strength out of it. And the, the weight of the wings are then pulling 7G, just extraordinary yeah. strength in a Spitfire. Yeah, this area and sort of the first two foot of the wing all houses where the engine bolts, the undercarriage bolts on, the wings bolt on. So tremendous loads. Tremendous, tremendous loads. Yeah. Wow. Can we have a look at the cockpit? Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Great looking at the uh, at the cockpit, Mo. It's it's taking shape, but obviously there's still a, a lot 
to do. We've got a lot of the piping in, the basic instrument panels there ready to go. How much more sort of work do you reckon? It there's there's it? still a fair bit of work to go. Um, a lot of the systems sit on the shelf ready. Yeah. But of course, we, we don't put the rudder pedals or the columns in till the end because they just get in the way of, yeah. of yeah. the other work. Um, so that the main areas at the minute are the, the trim wheels, the cables um, and the pipe work. Once that's done and tested, it won't actually yeah. take that long to fit the control. So all the control cables are ready to go. Yeah. It'll just be that will be done towards the end of the build. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, instrument panel, obviously ready to go in as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah both um, flying, flying panels are done. Um, but again, they won't go in until right oh, at wow. the end. Yeah. And these were essentially interchangeable amongst aircraft as well. I know airspeed indicators varied, but the blind flying instrument panel, as they called it back in the day, was a, a brilliant design because, you know, that could be put into a mosquito. And if you then converted to it, you knew where the, the airspeed indicator was always top left, etc. It was such a yeah. clever way of having sort of uh, the, the similar instruments in all the aircraft. Yeah, the same right through from, from basic trainers right up to, yeah. you say, Lancasters and the, the big aeroplanes. Fantastic. And obviously you've got another one ready for the, uh, the back cockpit as well. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I look forward to uh, studying that in more detail when flying. Yeah. <laughs>
KH was 403 Squadron, Canadian Squadron. Yeah. And then D was the, I guess, the fourth aircraft of that uh, of that one. I remember when, you know, as a little lad just putting the transfers, it always felt like she was getting getting complete. How difficult is it actually doing the markings on the uh, on the aircraft? Does that involve a lot of work? It does, yeah. Yeah, the aeroplane is camouflaged first, um, and then the individual letters are masked out, and they're actually painted, they're not transfers. Yeah. Um, but the difficult thing on a two-seater, because we have the rear canopy, you would just have to jiggle things about a little bit just to make sure you've got less, yeah, less fuselage side to yeah, put the, uh, yeah. the coat on there, yeah. Just to make sure it looks right when it's yes. all, when the canopy's yeah. closed that it's airborne. It's been wonderful to see her like this. She's, uh, she's so getting close, I guess. How many guys are going to work on her now till hopefully May when she's complete? At the minute, there's, we've got five guys on, but when the engine arrives, that'll open up so much more sheet metal work so yeah. we'll have up to seven people on it seven until she's finished wow that's going to be very busy but uh, getting close wow yeah. thank yeah. you so much yeah but before you go um got a few jobs for you on these fillets so you can drill some holes before you go i'm here to help so we're assembling this fillet panel here um they're joined together by various strips and rivets so we're just drilling this off here so um you can drill a few holes if you like parky before you disappear fantastic so at the moment it's two bits of metal that will be riveted together and then it will then be screwed around the edge and it will, would come off in one panel that's correct yeah <sighs> got it yeah. brilliant so this hole here needs to be drilled out yes please <laughs> don't mess it up <laughs> slightly nervous here we go How do? Yay! <laughs> Brilliant. Mo, thank you so much. It's uh, I cannot wait to fly her. I'm super excited and uh, it's been wonderful to see her in this state and all the work that you're doing. It's such skill, it's just brilliant to see. Thank you so much. Pleasure.